So this session is about benchmarking and performance testing. Uh, we had a session yesterday where we talked about how we're doing some of the automation at Hike. This is, uh, and that was more on the functional automation side of things. Uh, this one is more specific on benchmarking and performance. So KP, Pratyush, and I am going to kind of co-present this one. I'm going to give you a little bit of background, some context setting, and then Pratyush is going to jump in and do a demo of some of the things that we have. Uh, unlike yesterday's talk, this will probably reveal more information uh, for some obvious reasons. Uh, here, our goal is to actually walk you through uh, kind of our journey of how we started in 2014 and up till this point, uh, how we've done some performance testing. How many people are aware of Hike? Wow, awesome. The numbers just went up, right? <laughs> uh, so we have, uh, as you guys know, about 100 million users using this. Uh, of fort out of that, uh, about 40 billion messages are exchanged every month. Uh, so from a volumes point of view, I think we are like one of the top apps right now in India being used, uh, which obviously means that performance testing benchmarking becomes extremely important for an app like this. But I want to hear from you, right? Why do you think we should care as an industry, we should care about performance and benchmarking? What are your thoughts before we get started? Why should we care about these things? We as in in general, not just Hike, right? Any other company, why do they care about performance and benchmarking? I want to make this interactive, right? No one wants to hear a boring talk. User experience, okay, that's that's an important one. Uh, what do we mean by user experience? We want to make sure the experience on the app is seamless, right? It, everything scrolls smoothly, loads fast, uh, there is no lag, people get to what they want to do very seamlessly, all of that stuff, right? So that's a very important aspect uh, from that point of view. Anything else you guys can think of why this is important? Uh, time. Right, but that's the same point, right? I mean, you basically want to give a seamless experience to the user. That's only part of the problem, in my opinion. So performant, a non-performant app can actually impact the, the behavior or the functionality of your application itself. Right? So it's not just UX part of it, but it could also lead to uh, people not being able to do what they want to do. So if I send a message to you and it's an instant message and it took three hours to get to you, right? even functionally you got the message, but it's kind of broken. right? I mean, it's not instant anymore. I might well have sent a pigeon over and you'd get it faster. Uh, anyway, uh, here we're going to talk, so we're talking about these and there are other factors why benchmarking and performance is important uh, for sure. Uh, let's actually uh, jump into and look at from a user's point of view, how they would see an app that is not performant. Right, this would be a user's experience and we certainly don't want people destroying their phones. Only if Hike was in the business of making phones, we would love that. So let's talk about how this all started back in 2014. Uh, we were about to ship out a release uh, of uh, the latest, greatest version of Hike. Uh, we were shipping every two weeks uh, back in that point, and we were about to ship a release, and at this point, we didn't really have, we were just starting our whole automation effort inside Hike, uh, and you know, someone was basically manually testing the app, and they said, you know what, uh, when I actually force kill the app and start it again, it, feels like it's taking a little bit longer. It doesn't feel like it's very crisp and it's very great, right? But they didn't have really data to say what that, that means. Uh, so we said, okay, uh, let's actually try and pull some data. And we actually kind of ran some data, looked into this. And what we found was there was a shoot of 130 milliseconds on the app launch. 130 milliseconds, who cares? Yeah? But 130 milliseconds cumulatively over a period of time soon hits 300 milliseconds, which is human eye perceivable, right? So you can actually notice a 300 millisecond lag, and that's noticeable. So we wanted to basically kind of catch that and stop. And actually, if you see release on release, the blue one, the red one, and the 
yellow one, we were actually seeing that every release somewhere we are kind of shooting up slightly. Uh, so we said, you know, soon this is going to hit a point where this is going to cross the level where you, when, when a user launches, they'll actually see the app still kind of launching, and that's a bad experience. So we wanted to address that issue. So we decided to actually pause the release. We, we decided that the release won't go out. Uh, we need to actually find out what's the problem before we ship out this release. And, uh, you know, obviously when you take a call like this, many people will jump on it, right? Because people want the releases to go out on time. So we had a lot of stakeholders jumping in, and uh, at this point, a lot of people were saying, here on my phone, this is working perfectly fine. I don't see any behavior, uh, any lag. Uh, other people were like, no, like this looks like some lag. And it doesn't seem like a scientific way about going about an app that is used by 100 million people, right? Uh, so what we decided is we decided that we need a little bit more scientific way around how we do this. Uh, and so we decided to actually look at analytics to make certain decisions on when something will ship, when something will not ship, and put a basic framework in place that will help us make more informed decisions, right? So the first part we actually going to, of this talk, we're going to talk about how we went about creating this basic uh, framework which helps us benchmark things. And then we'll talk about diving deeper into the performance side of things. But when we talk about benchmarking, right, what, what do you guys do typically in your company? Do you pick random 10 devices? Do you pick random 10 use cases and try and do performance testing? Or there's a little bit more structure around this, right? So you look at, uh, in the market, what are your top devices being used by the users, right? So Sorry? Correct. So top devices that your app is installed on, you want to basically look and do performance testing on those apps because that's going to give you the biggest buck for the bank, uh, a bang for the buck. Uh, what else would you do? That's only one part of the story. So you want to look at specific parts or use cases of your application where you think things might not be most performant and you might want to do that. So one is looking at the devices, one is looking at the use cases. Uh, there's more to it, right? Crashes, I wouldn't put that into uh, this segment of the bucket. That would go into the functionality side of things. Uh, So usage, data usage on the customer side, right, is important. So basically what we're talking is when you do profiling, you need to do profiling on the user side of things, right, and you need to do profiling on the device side of things. Uh, what does this mean? We'll dive into a little bit more detail. So on the user side of things, we want to basically look at hike-specific data. Uh, what is hike-specific data? We want to see how many chat threads do you have open? Like how many active chats do you have open, right? If someone has five active chats open and an app launch would not take as much time, if you had 500 chat threads open, it might take longer time. How many, uh, you know, stickers do you have uh, downloaded in your, uh, you know, phone? That would have an impact. Uh, you know, how many groups you have created and so forth. So there'll be a whole bunch of user specific data that will impact. And there will be uh, device-specific data that will impact. This is things like how many contacts you have in your address book, how many uh, you know, photos you have on your gallery, uh, things like that. So there are all of this, which is user-specific data. And then we look at uh, devices, right? So like you pointed out, like Pooja pointed out, what are the top uh, devices being used uh, by Hike users? But that's not sufficient because we might be missing a completely big market uh, you know, that we are not into. And if one of the reasons could be because your performance is really bad and people are not using your app on those devices. So you also want to look in the market, what are the top apps right now? Uh, sorry, what are the top devices right now? So you take all of this and you mishmash and you create basically a kind of uh, metric that we came up with, which is basically we segmented our users into different buckets. Uh, we call them 50, 80, uh, 85, and 99th percentile. Uh, and then we look at some of these uh, things in terms of the number of uh, messages, uh, group chats that are active, one-on-one -on -one chats, sticker packs, status updates, address books, so forth, right? Like a long list of things. Uh, these numbers are obviously uh, cooked up numbers. We can't reveal the actual numbers, but this should give you an idea of how we try to segment our users into different buckets. 
once we've segmented our users into different bucket, now the next thing is to actually look at, this is the user specific data. The second thing is to look at the device specific data. So in India, what are the top uh, phones on which uh, people are generally using messaging apps? And inside that, which are the top app, uh, phones on which, or devices on which uh, Hike is being used? So we looked at both of this information. Obviously, this is, again, for various reasons, blurred out. Uh, but you know, again, the point is that you do this kind of an analysis. You pick up this list. And then you need to come up with how now you're going to benchmark based on this. So I think I've spoken enough, but given you a broader framework of what went through, now we'll jump into a demo and actually look at step by step what do we analyze. Yeah. So KP, over to you. Uh, so before I jump into Hike or market, uh, there are companies that do that for you. So uh, Naresh talked about profiling of users and profiling of devices. So now, regarding all these parameters, we have our own benchmark application simulating the real market scenario. We have created the environment. We have devices which have preloaded data and the topmost data uh, devices that we'll be using. But that's not enough, right? I mean, the major question that comes here is, what do you benchmark your application on? What are the actions, or what are the activities for which you want to check whether your app is performing well or not? Can I get some ideas? What would you like to check in your application? If it is working, I'm good to ship. Or at least this is the basic functionality which should be working. That's a very good point. App launch, anything else? Sorry? Yes, that is also a very good point. Of course, if you're making uh, constant calls in the app, some data is getting loaded dynamically. Yes, so that's like putting app your app loading in the and then specific screen loading time you want to measure. Putting your app in the back. So rendering of data once you bring your app back to foreground, all right? Background, foreground activities. Exactly. So for us, it's a messaging application. You'd say the chart thread messaging, right? All right. That is one parameter that I would like to shift to performance side, uh, because user does not actually perceive that. But still, we will be covering that on a later stage. In our case, we work both offline and online, so it's not <laughs> important for us. Definitely, if you have some kind of, yes, sure. All right, so we've got a bunch of ideas, and I think that's a very rock solid idea. So let's jump into the demo. Let me show you the application that we have developed. So it's hosted on our local machine, of course. So this is the uh, UI that looks like basically. So these are the actions currently that we are benchmarking our application on. Of course, like we discussed, this is not enough. There's a long way to go from here. Perfect. Let me just open this drop down. So like we talked about, uh, app launch time, right? So there are two major aspects, force kill and force stop. So we are measuring app launch time after both of these. Then the next thing that we talked about, the core, uh, the core uh, of the application itself, for us, it's the chat thread opening. That comes next. Then there was seamless uh, dynamic data loading. So that is chat thread logging, chat thread scrolling. You don't want scrolling to lag or any kind of animations to lag. Then we talked about uh, external library. So we, when you start, try to start a new chat, all the contacts in your devices are imported and listed in the application itself. So that is one screen sh which should open seamlessly and instantly. So let me just select any particular action. And now we've run this on a bunch of applications. We do it periodically. So I have a list of APKs. Let me just. One thing I forgot to tell uh, initially is 
a lot of what we are talking is Android specific. Uh, you know, we're not going to discuss uh, iOS specific stuff here, uh, but this should give you a pretty good idea of how we are doing on Android. So a lot of what we are going to talk is Android specific. So of course, when we run this application, the benchmarking tool, we get all the logs. Now, as a customer insights team or as an analytics member, it's not very user friendly going through the logs, right? So they need to have it in a very formatted manner. It makes their lives easier. We dump all the data to a graph, so it's just a basic comparison. So as you can see here, there are two points that I'd like to mention. So first is, usually you have a set of actions you would like to you know, perform it, take the reading, parse it, and get the data. But that's not enough. Sometimes, now we are simulating the real user's device. Sometimes there might be multiple applications in the background, and because of that, your my phone might be lagging, and the effect of that, impact of that, you might see on your foreground application, which is Hike Messenger. So one iteration of the reading is not enough. You might end up with outliers sometimes, which might, might cause a panic. So it's always better to take five to 10 iterations, take an average of those. Despite of that, you might still end up with outliers, multiple outliers at the same time. So the only way to you know, overcome that is run the suit again get a good data. So here you can see uh, three particular appli uh, application versions are there. There's a jump, and uh, so these jumps, I s selected this specifically because this data is with the outlier. Actually, we were having a uniform data, and then this is where we caught that, okay, we should have multiple iterations because we are having one outlier very high, which is screwing up the overall average. So, this is pretty much uh, the application. Uh, any questions around this? Sure. So for benchmarking, we are considering the Wi-Fi speed itself. Right now, we, I'm only concerned with the activities loading. I'm not concerned whether they're interacting properly with the network or not. That test gets pushed down a little bit lower. We'll come to that part as well when we start playing around with networking, network and other aspects of performance testing. So here I'm more concerned whether my application as a normal application is working fine or not without considering other environments. So generating the load, we talked about the user profiling and device profiling, right? So uh, the numbers that we showed, let's say we talked about 99, 85, 80, 50. So let's take any one bracket, 80 percentile. I have the numbers. We create backup uh, files of those. And then when we sign up, we have the functionality of restoring from backup. If you reset your application, and then when you try to log in again, sign in again, we restore the backup for you so that your chat messages and all your data in the application basically does not go away. So we do that. We perform a fresh sign up with the backup file, restore. So I have the user data and the contacts are there and the you know device data as we discussed that is simulated so i have the environment set up and then i run my test suit on that so for example uh, it's chat thread opening i need to ten, take 10 iterations uh, my ui test will perform 10 of those actions because that's how the user works and in the back end my thread will be working which will keep pinging for the log lines it will collect those log lines then there's my parser which will pass through the log lines, get the values, push them to DB or wherever you want to store them, and then send it to the UI for the formatted manner. It now, just the visualization part. Everything else we're going to show how you can do through. No, this is just rendering the data that's already collected. This is a CI system which actually kicks off these, right? This is about just rendering those and visualizing those things. Here you're not kicking off the build, right? This is just for a visualization. There's other ways, other parts from where it actually gets kicked off. Any other questions? Okay. All right. This was the demo that we actually went through.
All right, so, so we talked about benchmarking. Now, but as you saw, a lot of questions came around network as well. This was completely from app's point of view. There are other things in the device itself, especially Android being an uh, OS which facilitates you to play around. There are a lot of things, a lot of parameters that you want to take care of, right? Example, network, one of those. Any other examples that you can think of that we should consider should be optimized? Memory, CPU usage, memory usage, right. So what we like to call at Hike is the four pillars of benchmarking, memory, battery, CPU, and network. If I do not look at these four aspects, I might end up somewhere where my app is actually working fine in the UI, in the benchmarking side, but in the performance side, it's not that optimized. So let me share an incident that happened with us. So quite a few releases back, we saw that our app was getting killed in the background. It was an internal release, of course. So we were still in the development phase. Now we didn't know what was causing the app getting killed in the background. So we dig deeper. We found that we had integrated a new feature then, uh, regional keyboards. We were supporting, we were starting to support 10 regional languages. Now when we go in the chat thread and you open the keyboard, and if you have already selected that, the custom keyboard comes. So we found that whenever that was getting loaded, particularly the app was getting killed. Not a good sign. We cannot ship at that moment. So we decided to dig deeper. We found that the external library that we were using for uh, our custom keyboard was in turn internally using a native Android library, which was shooting up the SO memory map values. Now, I'll talk about all these terms later. So this was one particular uh, you know, aspect of memory, which was sh shooting up, and that was causing my app to, kill, to be killed in the background. So why does this happen? So Android has made it very clear that if the app exceeds a particular threshold value of memory consumption, it will kill the application. They do not assure you that if you, you know, remain below the threshold value, they will not kill the app. They, will, they might still kill the app, but at least you have to be optimized in that way because if you cross the threshold value, you'll definitely, your app is definitely getting killed. So we dig deeper into that, and that is where we realize that memory is probably the most important aspect among these four. So let me get a little bit deeper into memory. On a layman term, if, if we talk about very basic, so there are two major parts of memory which Android plays around with. There's a private memory that is allocated to your application, which is private dirty, or USS. That is your unique set size. That part of memory will only be shared by your application, and it's released only if you force kill or force stop your back, uh, application. It might be released if you push it to the background also, it depends on how your application is making use of the memory. The next part that comes is shared dirty, or PSS. This is proportional set size. Now this is a chunk of memory which lies there, and it's shared by a lot of processes. One of those processes is your application, and let's say a couple of them are using it. Now if we add this private dirty and shared dirty and say this is the memory that is being consumed, by your application, that's not right. Because a lot of processes are sharing this PSS value. So what we do is, what Android does is, they divide this PSS equally among the number of processes that are sharing this. Then that chunk and the private dirty that is allocated to you, that gives you the total memory. Apart from that, Android does not really, uh, it does not have at all the concept of swapping memory, right? Plays around with paging and memory ma mapping. Memory mapping in turn, itself has a lot of different, different branches. So I'll just name them a few. There's SO, JAR, DEX, there's ART, OART. And there are a lot of aspects. I mean, if we start looking at each one of those, it's a day-long conversation. But yeah, most important ones, like I talked about the SO native map. So what does it contain as a native code, like native elements, like your code itself. Then JAR is uh, any external libraries that you're using. Dext is basically uh, your Dalvik executable. 
So these things. Now you as a developer cannot control each and every aspect. You can bring them down as a whole. What you can control really is your private dirty and your heap memory. So how do you calculate these values? I mean, a lot of companies are out there who are providing benchmarking and performance. I'm pretty sure the basic, the base which is being formed for all these readings is ADB. So Android Debug Bridge, they have provided us with a set of operations which you can uh, perform and get the readings directly at, from the kernel level. So we have one for battery, Dumpsys battery. We have CPU info. We have mem info along with the package name of your application. And then there is this particular file, procnet, xt, qta, guid, stats, which it digs into the networking files and tells you how many packets you received and sent, and it gives you a very, very clear bifurcation. Let me just quickly shift to the terminal and show you what kind of readings these give. So that will probably give you a better picture. JP, could quick time check 15 minutes to go. All right, so probably we'll not dig into the. You can show one or a couple of sure, commands. Sure. He's got his phone connected right now. So it's a physical device. So, okay, uh, one quick point that I'd like to add here is, so if the phone is connected, the question asked, raised is, how do we do battery testing? There are two ways of going about it. You can directly go into the kernel files and fetch the values from there, how much uh, current is being flowed, and but it's, it's, I'll not go into the details, and it's very complicated to do that. The other way is, you can connect your device wirelessly through ADB, and then trigger your test suit on that. So for battery, the command is adb shell dumpsys battery itself. So it's more than two devices connected. All right, so as you can see here, I have only one device connected. It's showing two. The other one is actual device which is being showed when you actually connect your device, right, with the device ID and everything. However, to run the test cases over battery, wirelessly, for battery, actually, we have connected it through IC, uh, TCP IP protocol <coughs> with the uh, IP address of the device. So what happens is I disconnect the device, I run the ADB devices command again, and that's the only device that's connected. I have the device connected uh, without the cable. Now if I run the battery command, Right. <laughs> All right. This is why we pray to the demo gods. All right. I'll do one thing. Since we have a time crunch, I'll just directly connect the device. So this is something that you get. What we are concerned with is the level. Now, when you scroll down and you look at the battery value, this is exactly what you see as a user. So this is all that I'm concerned with. Then quickly jumping to uh, CPU info. So you see a list of uh, services, all the services that are using CPU right now. Right now, no operation is being performed in Hike, so the package is not there. Then uh, quickly jumping into mem info because that is a very important aspect providing the package name. So a lot of data is thrown when you do that. So may, mo most important of them that we talked about, the native heap, Dalvik heap, and the PSS total and the private dirty you can see there. That is what we, have, we should be concerned about. And when you come down, there is SO map, jar, APK, TTF, DEX, there's a lot of values. You need to delve deeper into the concept of each one of those and see how they impact your application as a whole. All right, so uh, these are the basically commands and how we are how we are running our uh, performance suits. So optimization. When we started with our performance suit, now there are four aspects that we have to check across so many templates. So we ended up with a time of somewhere around 13 hours. 
I mean, this was massive. I have to run it on an urgent basis. It, it gets a problem. So what we were doing then was first run the CPU, then battery, then memory, and then finally network, get all the data, and then send out a report. And then we were taking around 20 iterations. We observed taking 5, 10, or 20 iterations, I'm almost getting a leveled value. So why not reduce my number of iterations? We came down to somewhere around 10 hours from there. Still a big number. So we thought, all right, I can do one thing. I have to connect wire for CPU memory, a CPU memory and network wirelessly for battery. Why not run these three parallelly? I have the same set of templates from the analytics team, the, like we talked about the user profiling. I know uh, on a daily basis, at least a user sends out 50 text messages. So that's a test case for me. But I have to check CPU, battery, memory, and network for all those. Let's perform it once, get the values for all three at once. That brings us down to somewhere around seven hours. From there, we said, why not run everything wirelessly? Why do connect wire at all? Run all four at one go. The templates remain same. They remain constant. Run everything at once, bringing us down to somewhere around 3.5 to 4 hours. And that is a big dip that we have seen. And this is actually a lot more realistic because people won't connect their phones and do messaging. They typically disconnect. So this is a more realistic test. So while it improved the performance of the test suite itself, it also gave us a lot more realistic read of how the users would actually see the performance. So, of course, this is not enough. There's a lot, lot more to do. So talking about future enhancements. So we could quickly pause before we jump into that. Any questions so far? I think we brushed through a bunch of things. Yeah. Uh, so I did not show you the application actually. What we do is we have been running it on a bunch of applications, versions, right? APK versions. So let's say I'm on version one today, I ran it. I see I'm, I'm pretty good to go, I've optimized. It's using very less CPU, very less memory. That becomes my benchmark value, my threshold value, the baseline. I build version two tomorrow, I get all the data and see what's the jump. If there is a dip, good enough. I should do that in every activity of my application. There is a jump, why is it? Then we try to delve deeper into the code, what exact activity caused it, because we are benchmarking activity-wise, and we are performing theme uh, template-wise. So temp one template we talked about, 50 text messages being sent out. So I know that is causing a shooter. I go into the code of that. We can always run a tra uh, trace view sys on that through DDMS. Get the exact spike, and then you know bifurcate in a function functional basis everything from the code itself. So that, of course, requires a bit of debugging, because, of course, you need to verify where exactly is your memory going high. And parallelly, we run these commands to get the values and see what is shooting up. So to your question, there's no golden standard that you should meet this number. It's basically a relative scale, and which is where benchmarking comes becomes important. So you keep benchmarking, and any time there's a shoot up, you know something's going wrong. right? It should not exceed certain thresholds. So there are certain thresholds that are set. It should not exceed certain thresholds. If the thresholds are exceeded, then it basically fails the test. Someone had a question over there. Yeah. Uh, you made certain assumptions. You're saying that if, if I have a 100 million user base, I need to test against X number of devices. We don't follow the industry, whatever you said. Uh, I've, I've, for this is the first time I've actually heard something like that didn't really affect us. I mean, if we, tomorrow we had 500 million users, does not mean I will increase uh, 
that's so we there is so we what we are talking is mostly client side performance right there's obviously server side performance that needs to be done and server side is where the number of users will impact you right on the client side number of users i have 100 million or 500 million users actually on the client side it doesn't impact you provided your server side you're handling concurrency and all of that stuff on the server side so decouple the two right on the client side you're both mostly focused on there are again we did profiling we figured out what is the average number of chats you would have right typical user bucket them into different percentile because we want to make sure across the different percentiles people have seamless experience so we might optimize only for the highest performance bucket and then screw the others then that's not the right thing to do you want to make sure across all the buckets there is a reasonable performance of course if someone's sending like 500 million messages every single day uh, to lots of people their performance will be slightly uh, like more than someone else who's sending you know in the 80th percentile so those are the things that we are measuring on the client side uh, it doesn't really matter in my opinion how many overall user base you have uh, talking about the number of devices that we are actually using at this point we are essentially testing it on three devices uh, this is something we'll talk about in future enhancements is we want to increase that number of devices to more but for now we are actually benchmarking on three devices which is our top three used devices Okay, did I answer your question? We are lucky we are only in India. <laughs> <laughs> sure. We talked, right? We picked the top three devices that are used on hikes. You need to start somewhere, right? Again, there's a point we'll come talk under future enhancements where we want to improve this thing. But what we are seeing is in the top three, we are able to catch, uh, we, are, we are able to get 80% feedback, right? So 80% feedback is good enough. There is obviously room to improve on the, getting the rest 20% feedback. But again, uh, starting somewhere, I think, you know, even like we started with one device. Now we've gone to three devices. And grow, gradually will grow to more devices. We did a talk yesterday where we talked about APM and Dexter and stuff like that that we are using. Yeah, yeah, it's APM. Uh, if, if, if let's say your uh, CPU usage shot up and then you want to do an analysis of, uh, you know, why did it shoot up? That's what I think KP was explaining about using, right. go ahead. So there's any, you know that this particular activity is creating a higher value in your memory consumption. You go to your code, you start a trace view on those activity init methods, and then you go function by function. So it gives a very detailed analysis of each function how much memory they are consum consuming, how much time are they taking to initiate. So you can benchmark on those values and then you know take an analysis uh, what exact function is there which is causing. In fact, initially we talked about one example where we saw a shoot up of 130 milliseconds, right? There where we actually dug in, uh, we realized like deep down in the chain, call chain, somewhere a developer had added a new call which accidentally goes and does an IO operation. And when you try and do an IO operation on a UI thread, it's obviously going to introduce some kind of a lag. Now that lag might vary significantly depending on the device type, right? Uh, but you can catch even things like this, uh, you know, like small millisecond jump and then analyze those. This is where the benchmarking is important. So we have built our own tool. Uh, there's a time crunch, uh, probably once we finish, we can sure, sync we'll up offline. But essentially building on top of what is out there, we've, we've not like built. We just built our own stuff. You, you'll keep hearing this not invented here syndrome, uh, very big in hike. We basically 
try to do a lot of stuff on our own. Not a great thing, but also on, on the other side, it's a nice thing, you know, from actually kind of pushing the boundaries. Okay, then let's go through the future enhancements. Hold on to the question. We are running short of time. So let's quickly jump into future enhancements. So the first one is we talked about right now we have uh, CI uh, as part of our, uh, we, we basically trigger this weekly uh, right now. And we want to actually make this part of our, uh, with every check-in, we want to basically trigger this. Uh, so that's one enhancement that we, we are basically working on right now. Uh, where it will become part of this thing. Uh, we talked about device coverage improvement. Right now we are basically on three devices. We want to improve the de device coverage. Yes, in yesterday's talk, we talked about how we have set up uh, Dexter, which can support up to 80 devices. So the idea is to essentially have uh, you know this suit run on those 80 devices that we have set up. So that's a future direction that we want to do. As of now, we only do APK size uh, benchmarking on a uh, you know, uh, like just before making a release, and it's also kind of a manual check. Someone runs an APK size check and verifies whether, you know, but we want to actually make this also part of, so when we talked about the four pillars, uh, we were planning to add APK size as part of that thing that will get regularly checked because uh, we are also very sensitive of not increasing the APK size given our users are very data sensitive. So we want to make sure that that becomes a part of our whole benchmark. Uh, along with these, uh, we run through four commands, that's not enough. Android is providing you to, they, they give you the freedom to read into, dig into the kernel files themselves. So there's another uh, command, procstats, along with meminfo, which gives a different kind of data. Now if you compare those, you might find a difference of data with, for the same uh, aspect. Now we're not very sure what the difference is, but I mean, you can look into any of those, you know, you have to take it with a grain of salt. So. Probably these are the future enhancements. And so, yeah, to finally summarize what we talked about, we talked about analytics-driven benchmarking, simulating the real market scenario in our own test lab for performance and benchmarking. Then we talked about the four major pillars, CPU, memory, battery, and network. And we focused mostly on memory because probably that is the most important aspect. Then we, uh, yeah, this is deep analysis into memory. And then we talked about the parallelization of test suits, going completely wireless, running everything, and getting the real data as the user would actually end up using your application. So, so that's kind of, yeah, a quick summary. So we have three more minutes for questions. Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> Not true in our case. Uh, so his, I'll just repeat his question for the benefit of everyone. Uh, so he he's asking, uh, what about server side performance? Uh, you know, can you throw some more light on for server side performance? Uh, because at the end of the day, if you only measured client side, uh, it would massively get impacted by the server side performance. Uh, in our case, that's not 100% true because we also have peer to peer messaging, offline messaging, which doesn't hit our server at all, right? So for, for a lot of our use cases, like I can transfer a 1 GB file to you, our server will never even come to know about it, right? That's just going to be directly through a Wi-Fi direct to you. Uh, so we are doing, on the server side, obviously there's a really impressive team at Hike which does a lot of performance testing on the server side. Here we are mostly focusing on the client side of things and how we do performance testing on the client side of things because for us, without the server also, there are a lot of use cases that exist. Right, so it's not true in our case. Maybe in other cases it might be true where server is, you know, an integral part of every use uh, use case. In our case, that's not true. Okay. One last question. Uh, let's talk offline. <laughs> <laughs> All right.
Yeah, so actually that's a good point. Uh, we should, uh, so just repeating what he said, like on the performance side of things, uh, you know, 2G network, 3G network, Wi-Fi network, 4G network now, uh, there are a lot of different kinds of network and the performance can, uh, you know, get impacted by different kinds of networks. So how are you doing performance testing on it? KP talked about mostly right now we are doing all our testing on Wi-Fi. Uh, so that's again, I, I would say, is an area of improvement that we need to add. Uh, uh, we do do some, go ahead, sorry. So uh, adding to that, we are actually testing on these three networks as well, 2G, 3G, uh, and 4G as well. So uh, normally if you see, if you're sending any data over the server somewhere, the amount and the chunks of data remain same despite of the network. But uh, we uh, have, uh, you know, optimized our file transfer and message transfer and everything such an extent that you change the network and our chunks that are going go in that manner. So I will not uh, delve into the details of the same, yeah. but uh, <laughs> talking on a very abstract manner, uh, we have, we always have log lines, we switch the network, we run the test case, and we see that whatever chunks they are supposed to go in with respect to the network that we have selected, whether they are going or not. If I hit that particular threshold value, uh, uh, it assures that my time limitation, whatever, I have a threshold for that, I'm meeting that. If that chunks are not met, it means I'm increasing that and I need to dig deeper into my code and see where exactly is it failing. So why I said this is an area of future improvement is because there's a lot of uh, interesting work that is done on the way uh, we, we work with different network types. And those kind of tests, actually right now, we're trying to push at a lower layers of our test rather than keeping it at this level. Uh, so right now we have few tests that we run across multiple networks, but ideally we want to push those uh, at lower layers because that's where a lot of algo and other interesting things are built to basically determine how you do network specific use cases, uh, which right now we are actually not fully automated. So that's an area of improvement in, in my opinion. All right, thank you everyone. I hope you had something interesting to take away from this session. Thanks guys. Thanks.